All right. This is a little bit of old past year question. Later, we'll look at, look at something that is more common. Um, but in this past year question from winter uh, 2009, paper 4.1, it starts off first by asking you, what are the two advantages of transmission of information in digital rather than analog form? Stay and explain. Advantages. So got two. Lah. One, we can filter. Okay. Can filter. So this means the signal can be regenerated. Please don't use the word filter. Use the word regenerated. I think about it as filtering. But we remove the noise. Okay. To remove noise. Okay. Since uh, digital signals are a series of discrete numbers. Second one, can be encrypted. Okay. Signal can be encrypted. Okay. For security. Okay, lah. good enough. Next, convert the decimal number 13 to a 4-bit digital number. The digital number 0101 to a decimal number. So here, I will teach you how to press the calculator. Of course, if you're like, Miss, I know this. I know how to do this mathematics. Great. Go ahead. But uh, if you've forgotten the binary number, by the way, the binary number works as if uh, you're an alien with two fingers. Lah, and you can only count to two. Okay, so a uh, base 10 conversion, okay, is when, you see, uh, you go to nine. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. A base 10 conversion here means you reach the number nine is when you level up. You go up one digit when you reach nine because our hand got 10 finger. So when we count to 10, it's time to level up. Because that's why zero to nine. One zero is when we level up. Just like one nine is when we level up to two zero. The digit will shift. Okay. And this will continue until you get nine nine. And then the digit will shift. So we change over at nine. But binary means we change over at one. Alien counting with two fingers. Okay. So if you think about it, then they will make sense already, right? Because this is one. And then you count, doesn't that level up already? One, zero. They add a one at the back. And then one, one is full already. Reset one, zero, zero. If you play a Pascus, this will make perfect sense. Your ancestors will be proud. But if you don't use a uh, in when you learn basic calculation, uh, then this part of counting, not sure if you know this when we count, Whenever we move on to the next uh, digit, I don't know what's the correct term for this. We move on to the next number, uh, we change over at 9. So abascus play that way. Or is it change over at 5? I've forgotten my abascus. Sorry, grandma. Okay, but for this alien fingers, we count to 2. But you're like, hi, uh, miss, this one very tired. Leh. Well, if let's say you are like, can I just press my calculator? I'm happy you asked. I will teach you how to press it right now using a calculator. Okay, look at my calculator, which may not look like yours. All right. So here, we want to convert 13 to a 4-bit digital number. So I can't make this calculator bigger. Can I? Let me adjust. Hang on. Okay, calculator is bigger now. So first thing you do is you go to mode. All right, you see it's base N here. There's a base N. Okay, press 4. Okay, DEC stands for decimal, which is base 10. All right, DEC is decimal, it's base 10. So you need to tell the number, hello, hello, calculator, 13. Uh, 13 is in decimal, press equal. Calculator say noted decimal num input decimal number of 13. Okay, and then you tell, hey, calculator, can you please convert this to BIN? 
Can you see the B-I-N? Hiya, I zoom in some more lah. Nah, B enough or not? B-I-N, you know, I can see lah. Okay, B-I-N is here, hex. This is base 12, base 8, base 10. Aqua is Aqua, base 16. Okay, so the other ones, oh, this is base 10. That is base 10. So base 8, base 12, 16. Okay, I don't know. But the only thing we care about is bin. Bin for binary, not rubbish bin. Okay. <laughs> anyway, just press BIN and then it will tell you, hey, it is 1101. My friends, you go and write 4 bit, okay? Don't go and copy all the zeros in front. Huh? This is just calculator being what it does, which is extra. All right. So 1101. You can see 13 here is 1101. Okay, where is it? No, 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 no. 13 here is 1101. So this one is 1101. You can press calculator. Okay. So next one, digital number 0101 to a decimal number. Okay, let me zoom out for you to see. Okay, next part. Okay, let me write answer first. So 13 is 1101. 4 bit, uh, okay? So if let's say, if they want, for example, 4, then we will write 0100. It has to be 4 bit. 4 bit. Four digits. Okay, ah. Uh? One, two, three, four. You have four digits. I say until my sliver also dry. But people will forget one. They'll put 100. What's this? Habit from mathematics. All right. So if they say four bit digital number in physics, we care about the sensitivity of our instrument because it will tell us to what extent we can use the instrument for. So in this case, we can convert to four bit. Then let all your binary number be four digits. Must be four digits. Okay. So digital number 0101 to decimal number. Of course, I can copy here. 0101. Where is 0101? 101 actually. It's five. Let's say it's five. Miss, can use calculator mode. Can. Let's use some calculator. All right. I cannot make this window bigger. So, I mean, I can, but that would take some adjusting. So let me press all cancel first. You see this BIN here? This BIN says that now the calculator thinks the input is binary. So if let's say you go and put 9 uh, and you press equal, uh, your calculator will be like, excuse me, error, error. My alien only got two finger. Why got nine? Okay, okay, cancel. You put six. Error, error. My calculator only can be zero and one. Why you do this? Cancel. Okay, so you don't confuse first. Binary means the input is binary. So you can only put 1 and 0. So if let's say I put 0, 1, 0, 1, and I press equal, this is, oh, yes, this is binary, 0, 1, 0, 1. But now we want to change to decimal. Remember decimal is this num this, this button. Okay, you go and look at your calculator. DEC is decimal. You press this one. Ah. Hey, in decimal, is 5. So if now you press all cancel and you press 9, the calculator is set. I got you, bro. I know why it's nine. Because now in decimal, we can count to other digits. This can put 848. Uh, can. Decimal, ma. This is what you're used to. You can put any number you want. Decimal, ma. Can. Can convert to binary. Uh. Met error. Because when you convert this big number to binary, GG is too big. I think this one can. Change to decimal. 444, four, press equal, then you press binary. Mm. So this is 444 four, four in binary code. So basically, right, your calculator doesn't know what you're trying to input. You have to tell it, am I putting in a decimal number? Am I putting in a hex binary? I don't know why it's OCT and HEX. I can Google, lah, but we are going to deal with just decimal and binary. So if you're putting a binary number and you put something like 2, the calculator won't register because the calculator is like, what's 2? I only know 0 and 1. Okay? So then you will put something like, I don't know, 0, 1, 7, 0. Then you must press equal so that the calculator takes the input and press DEC so the calculator can convert into decimal. Now you are in decimal mode. If you put 0, 0, 1, 0, 
the calculator is just going to read 110. So if let's say you convert to binary, this is obviously not binary. Okay. So what you're going to do is when it's binary and you input a binary number, you have to press equal so the calculator can register. Then you press DEC to convert. This is 9. Okay. 1001 is 9 here. Yeah. If you are inputting 9 into decimal, like this DEC is 9, and you press binary, it will convert back to you. 1001. Okay, uh, so basically your calculator need you to tell it what you're trying to input. Are you inputting a decimal number? Then press equal. Always press equal. Then that means this is, when you press BIN, this converts to binary. Are you inputting a binary number? So let's say I press all cancel again, you see it's BIN. If let's say it's BIN and you want to put in a decimal number, you press DEC. So if it's binary, you're inputting a binary number, then you press equal. First, the, bin the calculator knows, oh, 0010 is binary. Then we convert to decimal. Then you press DEC. Oh, this is two. Okay, press a bit. You try a bit. Put in these numbers, play a bit and see whether you can convert base 2 to 10, 10 to 2. All right, so step one, input. Tell the calculator what the number you are inputting is. If you are inputting a number that is decimal, let's go move a bit and write the steps for you here. If you need it, if not, jump ahead, follow the time step. Okay, so step one. Go to mode. Okay, your calculator got mode one, right? Mode. And then go to base n. If it's a different variation of KCO, the calculator, it should be the same. Okay. Step two, declare your number. So if you want to go from binary to decimal, you press BIN. Okay. So if I go to mode, I press four, I press this BIN here can i make it bigger okay the bin is here nah press bin input binary number which is 1101 or something like that then press dec so 1101 I'm not press DEC because if you press DEC now, uh, it doesn't register because haven't input yet. So input binary number, very important. Press equal, equal sign. Now, 1101, one, when was it? Binary. Okay, then press equal. Ah, until you see this. Until you see something like this. Oops. Hello. Okay. Then, only you press DEC. So if I press DEC, uh, this one, then you will get this. So the calculator needs to know that you are inputting a number. That's why the equal sign. Okay. All right. So this is binary to decimal. Decimal to binary reverse law. Press decimal. Input decimal number. Press equal. Press binary. Cool. I write the reverse for you. Again, if you understand this, you can try out the table at the side. Can use a timestamp to jump ahead. If decimal to binary, then I will press DEC input decimal number. So when we input decimal number, it will look something like this. 
Okay, you press DC, now I don't know, 86. Then press equal. Input decimal number. Press equal. After you press equal, you should see something like this 86 decimal 86. If you don't press equal, right, you just press 86 like this. This is not, this is not okay. You see zero here, not okay. You press equal, then it becomes 86. That's okay. Until you see this, I think I'm doing a recipe video. Then you press our friend bin. Not rubbish bin, just by the way. Can you press bin? Ding. Then you read this. Okay, this is obviously more than a 4 bit conversion, okay? But just for example sake, I show a bigger number. Lah. And also, why we ain't gonna do this manually for big numbers? We want something like a circuit, like a calculator. Okay? So this is how you convert from digital to binary. I do not recommend people memorizing this. If you want to practice the conversion, you can try out these numbers if you need it. Okay, I think those people who do computer science, this is nothing, right? You probably jump ahead, right? You're probably not even here. Joking. Okay, so we got this already. You can press your calculator. You can convert manually, whichever way you want. Now we are at this part where they show you the block diagram of conversion. So analog signal is to transmit to be transmitted digitally. And we're going to transmit it uh, from ADC all the way to recovering as an analog signal. Right? So here, complete figure 12.1 by labeling block X and block Y. You just reverse law parallel to serial, meaning this is serial to parallel converter. This is ADC, this is DAC. Digital to analog converter. All right. Next part. Complete figure 12.1 done. State the purpose of the parallel to serial converter. So the parallel to serial converter, what it does is that it takes simultaneous bits of a binary number and transmit them one after another down the transmission line. Parallel means many, ma. okay? So parallel here is simultaneous. No? So parallel is for simultaneous, okay? Transmitting them one after another. Serial, series, uh, you current pass through the component one at a time, one after another, All right? So hopefully the naming will help you remember the purpose of all the blocks. As usual, they can ask ADC, they can ask DAC lah in other other years. All right, so part D. The original analog signal is shown in figure 12.1. So this is the original beautiful noise of your opera singer. The recovered signal after transmission is like this. Hi, uh, opera singer sound like robot. Okay, suggest and explain two ways which the production of the input signal may be improved so that opera singer doesn't sound like robot or human sound like human. Okay, so how can we improve? Number one, we can sample at more intervals. So for example, oh, you see here the peak, like not as high one, because I didn't sample exactly at this time. So when your opera singer reached that beautiful high note, high, uh, we didn't sample. Uh, you, we didn't sample here because maybe did not sample. You know how like your teacher tells a lame joke and then you blink and then you missed it. Your teacher didn't repeat and you ask your friend, why you laugh? Why you laugh? Same idea, no? The opera singer reaches a high note, but we didn't sample at that time. Gone Where is this? 
Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the sampling frequency or increase the sampling rate. Increase sampling frequency or sampling rate. Okay. So that the width of the steps, this is the width, is reduced. If the width is reduced, okay, it means that now instead of sampling here and here, which could be here and here, right, we now sample maybe uh, here, here, here. So now we will add another block here, another block here. So then you can register your beautiful sharp note. Okay, so when we decrease the block, make the histogram thinner, make the steps thinner, reduce the width, we can we may be able to pick up different changes in pitch. Okay, the second thing that we can do is we can also increase the number of bit. Four bit uh, means this entire graph, four bit. I went from zero to 15 and then I chop it up to 15 boxes. Hiyo. So basically, uh, I either have this number or this number. I have no number in between, either this one or this one. Mm. This this part where there's a there's a sound that slowly increases in pitch cannot hear. All right. So what we'll do is want to increase the bit rate. Increase the number of bits in the digital number for each sampling. to reduce step height, okay? So if let's say right now, I can only either have this reading or this reading, because this is my step height. Let me draw properly for you. So if I sample at these intervals, right? Let's say for example, this is one. This is two. So from my perspective, oh, I'll be one, 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 one until two, until here, and then I'll reach two. So all the in-between is gone now. This this beautiful part is missing. Cannot see, ah, cannot hear. So that's why you sound like robot, because the pitch suddenly changed without any intermediate uh, variation. That's why it sounds very weird to your ear. So when we say we want to reduce the step height, so that here we have another step to help us transition. That way the changes in pitch is not so abrupt. Okay. So later on, uh, hopefully we'll be able to show, let you listen to what happens when we play with the sampling frequency and also the number of bits. But the important part here is to understand that when we increase the sampling frequency for better signal, okay, the width of the step is reduced. So we can pick up uh, the variation that is very temporal. Okay, so make this thicker so we can see. Okay, so increase sampling frequency or sampling rate so that the width of the step is reduced. So that when you have a high pitch at a very short time, we can still pick it up. But do not write that as the reasoning, right? So that the width of the step is reduced. Increase the number of bits in the digital number for each sampling. Okay, so when we increase the number of bits in the digital number for each sampling is to reduce step height. But when we say reduce step height, so increase number of bit, reduce step height. Reduce step height here means if let's say you have a slight change in your frequency, 
we can also pick it up. So the idea here is that if there's any changes, whether the change is small or the change is quick, we must be able to pick it up so that my voice sounds like me. Because the variation of the human voice is pretty good, pretty robust. That's why we can create many, many sounds with our mouth. Okay. So we want to increase the sampling frequency and increase the number of bits to reduce the width and reduce the height so that it will look more like a continuous graph rather than a graph for boxes. Okay, so that's it for the example. In the next example, we are going to talk about how exactly do we change this going through the binary process and draw out the output. That would be a pretty popular past year question. But what we have learned so far is the block transmission and then the step along the way where we convert to bit. Okay, so this is a pretty long video, take some time to digest. We have learned everything that is happening here that brings us from analog, sampling, 4-bit conversion, change to binary, and how to improve the quality of this graph. Alright, so in the next video, next example video, we are going to talk about how to draw out this graph after conversion. That will be in the next one. Okay, so I hope you learned something today. Good luck in your A2 and I'll see you in the next video. Like, share, subscribe. Bye-bye.